Good evening. Welcome to worship at Cave Spring United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Lauren. And I'm Pastor Tim. And we are delighted to be gathered with you on this joyous, holy night when we celebrate the birth of Christ our Lord. This evening, we will be worshiping with our traditional service, so we invite you to have your candles from your Advent bag ready and to join us as we sing, as we praise God, as we uh, celebrate the light of Christ in the world. We also want to invite you to join us a little bit later this evening at 8 p.m. for Candlelight Across the Valleys. We'll be joining with Methodists, with Christians all across the Roanoke and New River Valleys, lighting candles and singing Silent Night at 8 o'clock on our front porches or in our yards, uh, reminding us that Christ comes wherever we are. So please step out on your balcony or your porch at 8 p.m., light a candle, and join us in singing Silent Night. You can sing along with that video that is available on the Roanoke District Facebook page and YouTube channel. But for now, let us center our hearts, let us settle our spirits, let us rejoice in God's presence together on this Christmas Eve night. Please join us in the call to worship. On this holy night, the kingdom of heaven draws near. We welcome our Emmanuel, God with us. Come make your presence known, O God. On this holy night, the light of the world appears among us. The brilliance of God scatters the shadows of sin. Come, shine through the darkness, O God. On this holy night, the heavenly host sings praise. The angels invite us to behold the face of God in a baby in a manger. Come into our hearts and homes, O God. Oh, come, our evening. 
During Advent, we have prepared for Christ's arrival. We have made room in our hearts, in our homes, in our community, and in our world. And now we rejoice, for Jesus has indeed come to dwell among us. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23 says, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. He comes to heal the broken systems and hurting people in our world. He brings grace to transform our pain into joy, our darkness into light. Tonight, we light all four Advent candles to give thanks for God's gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love. We light the Christ candle to give thanks that all of these gifts come together in one person, a child born in Bethlehem named Jesus. Let us pray. Eternal God, we rejoice tonight for you have come to live among us in Jesus Christ. Let these candles remind us that you, the light of the world are near us always, your presence burning within our hearts and giving light to all the world. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson tonight is Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Our second lesson is Luke 2, verses 8 through 14. In a region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, and you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, 
and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Yeah. Mm-hmm.
Our next scripture comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The nativity scene is perhaps one of the most recognizable images in Western culture. Whether it's a painting from the Renaissance or the painting on the front of a Christmas card, whether it is a complicated statue in an art museum or the Fisher Price figurines in my living room, we know the nativity when we see it. Whenever we see a child in a manger with Mary and Joseph looking on lovingly in a, main, or in a stable surrounded by animals, we can fill in all of the rest of the story. We can hear the angels singing. We can imagine the star in the sky. We can see the shepherds coming and the magi journeying from far away. All of those details fill in. All we need to begin that story in our minds and our hearts is a silhouette. A manger with a child, two parents, and a rough outline of a stable. It's familiar. It is beautiful. It is idyllic. Unfortunately, it's also probably not quite accurate. As much as we love this image, as much as it is imprinted on our hearts, and as most of it is true, there are still a few details that we don't quite have right in most of our artistic renderings, in most of the images we carry in our souls. Most of this, as I say, is correct. Mary and Joseph traveling to Bethlehem, that's right. Mary and Joseph finding difficulty seeking lodging, that's right. The God of all creation entering into the world in a baby in a manger. That's true. It's true that God entered into a moment in history in the midst of Roman occupation. It's true that God entered into a humble family, a humble beginning in Bethlehem. And it's probably even true that Jesus was surrounded by animals. But the barn, the stable that we imagine, is not probably quite right. See, when we read verse 7 of this passage, this familiar passage, 
When we hear that Mary wrapped Jesus in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn, we assume a stable. We assume a, a commercial lodging where they were trying to pay for a room. And that's probably not quite accurate. The word that we translate as in is katalami in the Greek. And it's a word that is more accurately translated guest room. When katalami appears elsewhere in scripture, it is the room designated as the place where Jesus shared the Passover, the Last Supper with his disciples. That upper room we hear about, that's katalami. It's a different word from the one the Greeks used for paid lodgings. Remember, Mary and Joseph were coming to Joseph's ancestral hometown of Bethlehem. This was where Joseph's people, his kin, were. So when Mary and Joseph pulled into town, they didn't go looking for the Holiday Inn or even for the Airbnb. They didn't find Hotel Bethlehem. They probably went to Joseph's second cousin once removed's house and knocked on the door and said, hey, can we stay with you? This was a young couple in poverty. They didn't have the means to be paying for lodging. They sought whatever accommodations they could get. But all of Joseph's extended family had also come to Bethlehem because of the census and things were crowded. And so when they came to this cousin's doorstep and asked for a place to stay, they were told, well, the Ketulamai, the, the, the upper room is full, but we'll give you the only space that we have. The space that you and I know is reserved for the least senior member of the family that comes to a crowded family gathering. It's the living room couch. Okay, probably not the couch, but it's, it's the living room. Without privacy, not the ideal space, but the only space on offer. And so Mary and Joseph, most likely, were in a living room. Scholars assumed for centuries that they were in a stable or a barn removed from everyone because the word manger to us suggests livestock living out back of the house. But archaeological evidence suggests that most first century Palestinian peasants had mangers in their homes. They didn't have a separate place to keep their animals. When they brought their animals in for the night to keep them away from thieves and predators, they put them in their one-room dwelling. And so, that nativity image is mostly correct, except it's not happening in a stable out back. It's probably happening in a crowded house with family upstairs and animals around in the middle of someone's living room. And it seems like a small difference. It's the same family, it's the same crowding, it's the same difficulty with hospitality. It's the same humble beginnings. For God come among us. But there's a big difference between God going to the barn out back and God showing up on your couch. It's a difference of proximity. When we imagine Jesus appearing in a barn, we can imagine a, a separation. We can rejoice that God entered into creation, but still hold God at arm's length. We can be thankful that God is near without thinking that God is too close. But when we think about Jesus born and placed in a manger in the middle of the living room, we don't have that comfortable separation anymore. We're not offered the luxury of God showing up somewhere else in the neighborhood or, or in the house next door and being near enough to call but not really involved. When we have this image of Jesus born in a living room, 
all of that comfortable distance, that remoteness, that arm's length that we might want to keep God at, is taken away. This understanding of the nativity challenges the barriers that we would like to put up in our lives. It challenges our desire to keep our religion separate from the rest of our lives. It challenges the boundaries that we put up when we try to think of our faith as something that belongs in a sanctuary or a stable or just a Sunday morning. When we hear in Luke's gospel that Jesus was placed in a manger and we envision that happening in our family home, we're challenged by a God who will not be kept at a distance. We're challenged by a God who gets all up in our business who wants to be involved in every part of our lives, who wants to be so near to us as to alter how we live and how we behave and who we are. In Christ's birth in a manger in Bethlehem, we are challenged to recognize the presence of God in our houses. We are challenged to welcome Jesus, a savior who comes not just to knock on the outside of our door, but who knocks on our rib cages, trying to get in to our hearts. We are challenged to see that God wants to transform every part of our lives. To not be someone that we visit on Sundays, but rather to be someone who dwells with us, who sits at our kitchen tables, who lounges on our couch, who shares a roof with us, who's involved in every part of our lives, every moment of our days. That is the miracle of the Incarnation. That the creator of the universe, that the king of all creation, cares enough, loves us enough to come be where we are. Not in a remote other part of the world, but right here. with us, where we live. God's grace is big enough to be where we are. And God invites us, challenges us to make Christ that much a part of our lives. As much a part of our lives as a family member, or as our very selves. Friends, on this Christmas Eve night, we celebrate that God has come near. We rejoice that God dwells with us. Not in the barn out back, not outside, but right here in our homes, and in our hearts. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we rejoice in the presence of God with us in Jesus Christ, let us pray together. Almighty God, you have come among us. You have come to dwell with us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. You have come to our community. You have come to our home. You have come to our hearts. Lord, make us ever more aware of your presence. Let us rejoice that you have come near. 
Let us be filled with your spirit and experience the hope and the peace and the joy and the love that is you. Lord, we ask that you would transform our world. We ask that you would bring hope to the hopeless and healing to those who are living with disease, with mental illness, with addiction. We ask that you would bring comfort to those who are struggling with isolation or with grief. Holy One, we ask that you would pour out your peace to end war and hate, to heal the conflicts in our relationships, to make us one with one another. Gracious God, we ask that you would pour out your joy, not just fleeting happiness, but deep joy that inhabits our souls and our lives that transforms us and enables us to see your presence. And we ask, O oh God, that you would send your love to fill our souls, to overflow out of us in our relationships, in our households, in our friendships, in our community, that all the world might know your love in Jesus Christ, a child in a manger, a savior on a cross, a mighty conqueror, freed from an empty tomb. It is in the name of that Christ and by his example that we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On this holy night, we celebrate a Savior who was born in a manger, who lived among the impoverished and outcast. And to honor Christ's birth, we offer our gifts to share with people in poverty and our community through our Benevolence Fund, which offers financial assistance to our neighbors in need, and to our backpack ministry, which provides food for the hungry children in the Roanoke County school system. So let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we are so thankful on this night in which you have given the gift of all gifts, the gift of Jesus Christ to us. So tonight we bring forth before you our offering for this Christmas season, to go to our benevolence and our backpack ministry. And God, we ask that you would uh, bless this offering and use it towards this ministry and to the building of your kingdom here on earth. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us pray. Christ, light of the world, we rejoice that you have come among us, that you have come to dwell in our neighborhood, in our homes, in our hearts. Let your radiance shine forth. Let it illuminate our hearts. Let us be filled with your grace. Let your love dwell in every part of creation. Amen.
Friends, the love of God has come near. Christ has been born and placed in a manger. He has come to our living rooms. He has come to our hearts. May you be blessed in this holy season with the love of Almighty God, the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.